Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode we made it into orbit and launched our first science satellite. In this episode, now that I've done the upgrading of all these two level 2 facilities off screen and got myself a bit of science, we are going to create a better probe and we are going to send that toward Mun. If I can stop hiccuping. I like how I hiccuped at the end of my last recording. Didn't have any hiccups at all until I sat down and started again. Get some water going. But anyway, advanced electrics isn't as important right now because we can get away with um, not using those thingies. But I definitely... How much are these? 160? Yeah. I want advanced flight control because I need a stability assist probe. Yeah, if I don't get a stability assist probe, bad things happen. There we go. Wow, I could go straight to high altitude flight from here. That's kind of weird. I can't even use thermal turbo jets yet. And dismiss that. Okay, so now I have uh, switched my fundraising campaign on screen because I had gotten a good amount of reputation. So that instead of it being at what like forty percent, it's at sixty now. Uh, I can't go any higher than that without upgrading this one last time. I did use outsourced R and D a little bit, but uh, I only used it for two missions to get enough science to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get patents licensing as soon as possible, but. First off, we are going to, now that we have the vehicle assembly building upgraded, we are going to build a new probe, a better probe. And I will see you guys when it's, it's done. I'll see you on the launch pad. Hello, and welcome to the launch pad. What is hidden underneath that giant fairing, do you ask? Well, I'll tell you once I'm done. I'm using four of these S1 SRB KD25Ks. They are experimental. I have a mission to test them landed at Kerbin. I also wanted to use the Rocket Max Skipper, but it wouldn't fit on here, so I decided not to use it. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and launch this bad boy to orbit. The only problem is with this thing is it's not going to turn, like, at all. It's, like, barely going to turn, so by the time I am angled toward, you know, a gravity turn, which is when you turn with the rotation of the planet to lower the effect of gravity on you. By the time I do that, my Apple Ops is going to be like 60,000. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to, I'm going to have a really steep ascent to start with. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, I'm using fairings. I unlock them. Uh, mainly the only reason I'm using is, um, I mean, my probe is relatively aerodynamic, but uh, this does make it a little, a little more efficient, honestly. And plus, it looks nicer. If I was using a mod like Ferrum Aerospace, where I really needed everything to be aerodynamic, then this would definitely be a lot more helpful. But as of right now, it just neatly hides away the contents of the probe, so you guys can't see it. I know, I'm evil, aren't I? Like, you can see my time to apoapsis is already almost a minute, and I can barely turn. And I'm actually going so fast now, I'm experiencing re-entry effects. That's how you know you're not being efficient. If I had put a reaction wheel, maybe between one of the fuel tanks, this would turn a little bit better, but, you know, I'm not sweating it. There we go. Turn up the throttle of this. Oh, and my apoapsis is already ridiculous. It's already, uh, turn you... Here, this will help me turn. Yep, see, my apoapsis is already 100,000. That is the definition of a steep ascent. So let me go ahead and bring this up uh, because I'm going to have almost no time once I'm actually at the apoapsis to actually burn. So I'm going to have to try to burn premature here. Now burning like this isn't going to really increase my apoapsis too much. As a matter of fact, if I burn down a little bit, it'll decrease it. I'm really just trying to flatten this thing out a little bit. Oh, a little bit too flat. Lower that a little. Trying to keep it around 100. Still lowering, so that's a bad thing. And increasing. Okay. That's a much, much better apoapsis. So, uh, is this the one that decouples first? Yep. Boom! That's what fairings do. And there's my probe. It's got communitrons here, cameras, which I have no idea how to actually use. 
And it's got the thermometer hidden away in there. Under an action group. And it's got tons of solar panels. It's got everything it needs. And I still have enough fuel to use the stage to burn. So that's what I will do. Uh, which way would I have to go? I'd have to point my nose down? There we are. And burn a little bit. Eh. Trying to keep pointing prograde. It doesn't matter because I'm going to have to really point prograde now and actually throttle all the way up. There we go. And my orbit should be flattening itself out a little. I don't really mind if my apopsis actually keeps uh, increasing a little bit. Yep, my orbit's flattening itself out a little. That's always a good sign. I want this to try to be a little equilateral. You can actually see the eccentricity and the inclination. My inclination is rapidly decreasing. Well, not really rapidly, but... And now it's increasing again because I messed up. There we go. Trying to really fix this thing. And I want to stop burning once my inclination's at a respectable angle. Uh, about one, that's fine. Now I want to point almost directly prograde. Maybe a little bit low. Yeah, come on. There we are. Oh, there we go, and we are at the apoapsis almost now, so let's go ahead and throttle up. And our periapsis is increasing slightly, but that's fine, and oh. There we are, I'm pretty sure I can get temperature readings from 106, 113, and having this side at 92, that's fine. It's on an almost, uh, hmm, well this one's not quite on a polar orbit, but this is almost perfectly equilateral, which is good. I want to try burning down a little bit. I want to try to get my inclination down just a tad more, okay. Nope, that's increasing the inclination. So I gotta go the other way. The only problem with still having the uh, launch stage on here is it's really hard for to turn this thing. Eh. Come. Nope, 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 nope. Going too far. Going too far. Going too far. Ah. Yeah, that's the uh, bad part about keeping the launch stage on here. And once I jettison this, without stability assist, I will not be able to control this probe, so. Almost there. Come on. Anti-radial, I think this is. Just want to flatten it out as much as possible. Oh. I almost have it completely flat. But, yep, that's good enough. Now let's go in here. Can I get uh, temperature readings from out here? Yes, I can. Alright, so this is my new science probe. And let's go ahead and get rid of that stage. There we are. That activates this engine. And we are all set. I can... There we are. Where's the sun? That's where the sun is, so it's not quite getting the solar panels efficiently. There we go. That's a little bit better. Alright, so yeah. This is now our main science probe above... Um, there we are. Switch to that science satellite. This one we don't need anymore because it's impossible to freaking control. So I'm going to set this thing on a re-entry burn. Eh. I don't like having two sa uh, science satellites at the same spot. Now, if I needed a comms network, having two satellites here would actually be rather useful. But if I wanted a comms network, I would set these guys in geosynchronous orbit. A geosynchronous orbit, by the way, is when an object constantly can see something that's on the horizon. Ah, this finagling is so annoying. Alright, well first let's rotate. 
little bit. Just trying to pr God damn it. That's close enough. Alright, this thing will now eventually crash back into the atmosphere. Oh, it's still going, apparently. Yep, this guy will eventually crash back into the atmosphere. Which is just fine by me. Because I don't want it anymore. So let's go ahead and get back to the Space Center. Alright, so, we've got a decent chunk of money here, but not enough. We want a little bit more money before we actually go ahead and explore the Mun like we are going to. Let's go ahead and get rid of this mission. Temperature scans of the Mun, no thank you. Temperature scans of Kerbin, no thank you. Visual surveys of Mimnus, no thank you. Mark 16 XL in flight, no thank you. None of these are even remotely interesting, so let me just get a science data from around Kerbin to get some easy money. If I can, please. Damn it! That's a waste of money. I hate when I accidentally click accept. It's so annoying. There it is. Alright. And this is the whole reason why I have the satellite in orbit. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't need this anymore. Just go ahead and give me the science data. And send it. See how well these... Um, Oh, wow, these solar panels work very well the way I have them set up. Boom. And the waste heat will actually go down a little bit when I'm on the other side of the... Can they... Can, can she be any louder? When I'm on the other side... Like, when I'm on the dark side, the waste heat will go away because the solar panels are not being utilized. Anyway, we're back up with more monies. If I can get my timer back up. Come on. All right. Now that we have money and we have uh, science that we're saving, honestly... We're going to go ahead and design something that is going to take me to... What the hell? There we go. To the Mun. Now, I don't have... I don't believe I have the science station yet. No, I do have the mobile processing lab. It's just heavy. Now, I don't really want to bring the mobile processing lab for what it's used for. Uh, but I do want to bring more crew with me. And I don't think I'll be able to do that, unfortunately. So, it's just going to be one. Yep, all these have a crew capacity of one. So, we are only going to have one person on the moon, unfortunately. One Kerbal on the moon. They're not people. That sounded horrible. They're not people. Alright, so, got that. Alright, that's all I'm going to show you of this build until it's on the launch pad. Secretness. Okay, we are ready. And I have six of these globe... Uh, six is strapped to the side with three T-800 fuel tanks and there it is the KW Walker Tree Maverick oddly enough it reads as being able to thrust even when it's not properly connected see that that's weird now, I don't know if it can actually thrust or not to be honest and if it can't well we're gonna have to do this whole mission again Anyway, those are all connected up here to landing gear, LV-909 engine, standard for a moon mission, three materials bays, three goo containers, three thermometers, a bunch of solar panels, some batteries, uh, comms dish, all that fun stuff. I have the science set to abort right here, so temperature at the launch, like materials study at the launch pad. Crew report doesn't need to be done. Temperature scan at the launch pad. Uh, Mr. Goo has already been done at the launch pad. All right, there we go. All right, we have SAS enabled. MechJab help me with the orbit info. There we are. Let us go. Oh, wow, this thing accelerated fast. Well, I'm already at 200 uh, kilometers per hour. That's a good start. <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm actually surprised this thing accelerated so quickly. Last time I tried using these, they did not accelerate fast at all. Now that we're at 300, I can turn a little bit. 300 kilometers per hour, that is. Wow, I'm lucky that did not fuck me over, honestly. Okay, we're going a little too steep here. 
not only we're we going too steep, we're also we've also lost a whole bunch of velocity because of that. Oh, and also this wasn't at full throttle. That's a mistake. There we are. Once we get above 300 again, that time to apple lapses will go very, very, very high. Now, that was a mistake, not going a full throttle right away. Oh well. Once this is back up to 45 seconds, it'll be easy. Oh, that's the good thing about this engine. It will start to overheat after a while. It's pretty fuel efficient with good thrust. It's just, you know, occasionally it will overheat. Alright, so this fuel tank is completely empty. Can I transfer fuel yet? Yes, I can. Okay. Man, I should have... Um, now that I can transfer fuel, I should have put fuel in these top containers right here. Like, underneath the, um... Underneath the science base. Should have put fuel uh, underneath those so I could transfer it when I actually got to the MUN. There we are. Basically, if your time to apoapsis is not increasing, or if it's above one minute, you're going either too, uh, too steep or too shallow. So... Good thing I... Uh, the thing I like about this engine, it's relatively quiet. It's nice and calming. Oh, uh... Definitely need to get uh, temperature scans and all that fun stuff. Materials from Kerbin's upper atmosphere, temperatures, and the rest of this stuff can be refreshed. All right, what's my apoapsis? Uh, Fifty-six. I really hope like this stage is supposed to last me to my approach. Otherwise, Jebediah might get lost. Uh, by and by lost, I mean he might get uh, stranded. So, I might sh I might need to abandon this attempt to get more fuel, honestly. Yeah, yeah that's another thing. My apoapsis wasn't increasing. Because I was going too, uh, too shallow. And not only that, but... God, I hate when I do that when my uh, orbit is so crooked. It's this 99, 98, 100, perfect. How much uh, would I need to burn for 16 seconds? I think I have 16 seconds of burn in this. Now I don't know if I have enough uh, burn to get into orbit land and get out of orbit of the Mun. I think I can I, I believe I'll just be able to encounter it, honestly. And I might need to... I might need to leave actually doing things on the Mun for another episode. And do a quick save here. Uh, brakes. Not brakes. Abort. Temperature scans. And materials bay. Okay. Alright. Now I'm going to go on EVA, grab an EVA report, and get the hell back in. Oh, can I not get back in? There we go. Ah, uh, the large reaction wheel. How you make maneuvering this a lot easier. Alright, let's go ahead and skip forward a bit. I want to get this to about 8 seconds or so. Maybe 9. All right, here we go. Track this maneuver node as closely as I can. Okay. Oh, looks... Oh, jeez. I also don't have stability assist on. That was smart of me. And don't get me wrong, this, this engine's fuel efficient, but... I don't think I can make it to the moon. Oh, I think I can make it to the moon. I just don't think I would be able to um, orbit it correctly. Oh, relatively circular orbit. I just need to burn anti-normal a little bit to uh, fix my inclination. Does that also change my apoapsis periapsis? Yeah, it does. That's fine. 
Alright, so what you want to do after that is you want to click on Mun after scrolling out by scrolling with the mouse wheel. And set it as your target. Alright. Let's see. Am I going to get an encounter? Almost. Alright, so if I want to get an encounter, I'd have to burn out so that way Mun would eventually grab me on my way back. But I kind of don't want to do that. Go from here. Let's see if I can't get an encounter here. I don't think so. I think Mun will have already gone past me. Yeah, it'll be all the way over there. So either either I have to wait a little bit to set up this encounter, or I need to burn outward a little bit more. So let's just drag this a little bit further over this way. And yep, let's see. And then it will eventually grab me, and that will put me into a polar orbit. Or, well, not quite a polar orbit, but that would take me 1 minute and 33 seconds of burn. Uh, 1 minute and 33 seconds, so 60 plus 33 equals 93, and this engine uses 1.17 units of fuel per tick. That would take me a 108 fuel. And then subtract that from my 173. That would leave me with 64 units of fuel to correct my orbit. That's fine. I just need to... Uh, you know what? I really shouldn't even bother. I mean, getting the goo from this high orbit would actually help. And then I could do an EVA report. So yeah, I should do that. It's a one minute burn. So I'd have to burn at about 45 seconds. Also, there are lights on here. They were supposed to be for landing, but this thing is definitely not going to make it to Mun, land, and then get back, unfortunately. Ah, Jebediah. You will not make it to the Mun this day. I think I have that crew report already, actually. Yes, I do, unfortunately. Now, what I can do, since, uh... Since the experiments are done, I can hit R to activate his EVA. Um, D and A, left to right, W and S, forward and back, Q, E, spin, left shift up, left control down. What I can do is quickly collect this data. It will render the experiment useless, but it's already gotten all of it that it can. And honestly, I won't get too much from being in high orbit of... Uh, Mun, so it's worth my time to do this. If I can grab this one to. Uh, nope. Collect the data. There we are. Okay, all three Science Junior modules are now inoperable. Let's go ahead and take the thermometer's data. Notice I could also grab it. That's part of Kerbal Attachment System. If I wanted to, I can grab these and attach them to a different part of the ship. Only certain things can be grabbed. Alright, that already has no data on it. Only certain things can be grabbed. Big stuff cannot typically be grabbed. There we are. You also want to make sure to take a look at your propellant. If your propellant runs out, you're dead in space. I mean, you're not dead, but unless you get extremely lucky or can pull off some really cool maneuvering, then you will be dead in space. But there goes my timer, so we're going to have to make a high pass at the moon and come back in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button for me. Make sure to leave me a comment, guys, and I will see you guys next time, where we will be going to the moon and unfortunately not staying. See you guys later.